Hello, and welcome to part two of the seven dispensations. I've got a lot of different things to cover, and I'm probably not going to get to it all in this video. But, uh, first of all, I want to say that um, whenever you're studying Scripture, you must look at it at the entire theme of Scripture, okay? You must look at the entire theme of Scripture. To understand a verse, it must be in relation to all the rest of Scripture. So, and I've said this before in other videos, but what you're going to have is a theme that runs through Scripture. Just like I was teaching with the rapture, the sons of God, uh, angels, giants, those teachings. Um, you're going to be able to see a theme or a thread that runs throughout the entire Scripture. And one of those is the everlasting gospel. Um, it is the same. One of the biggest errors that's going on today, and I've seen it all over the place, and there's going to be some I know right away that agree, disagree, but uh, people teach that the gospel that Paul had was different than the gospel that Peter had. And we're going to be looking at some scripture on that today. Um, it's very important that you understand that every man and woman gets saved the same way. Um, there are themes in Scripture that help you understand that everybody's on the same plane, same playing field, so to speak. Now, it is also important in any subject to not place one bit of Scripture over another. For example, there's a lot of people that say, well, I'm a Gentile, and so I just listen to Paul. Paul is the apostle to the Gentiles, so I just go from Romans to Philemon, and uh, never mind that he wrote Hebrews, so we're going to throw that out. And um, now only some of Romans is for me. See, they start cherry picking. Um, you can't do that. And I'm going to show you why. Simple verse. Let's go to Acts 20. There's going to be a lot of scripture, by the way. And I'm going to try to uh, not get in too big of a hurry. If this series takes three or four of them, that's fine. Um, Acts chapter 20. And let's look at verse 27. Acts 20 and verse 27. Paul, Paul, our beloved apostle, says, For I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. What do you think all the counsel of God is? Genesis to Revelation. We have it in our hands. It's the King James Bible. And I know there's going to be some that disagree with that, but the King James Bible is the pure word of God. That's what I teach out of. That's what I believe. And I don't make any apologies for that. Um, I have seen over time, it is a time-tested thing, that the King James Bible is without error. There are no errors in the King James Bible. You hand me an NIV, I can show you an error. I can show you several errors in under a minute. But, nonetheless, Paul says, For I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. The thing you have to understand about Scripture, folks, is from Genesis to Revelation, it's progressive revelation. And it culminates in the revelation of Jesus Christ. You see, this book is Him. This book is Jesus Christ on ink and paper. Okay? It is all the words of God, all the counsel of God. And to foolishly discard James or Hebrews, uh, never mind, by the way, that Paul wrote Hebrews. Oh, but he wrote it to the Hebrews. Yes, that's what it says. Just like with James, to the twelve tribes scattered abroad. Just like Peter, to the strangers. But nonetheless, people have to understand that we have been grafted into Israel. Okay? And that is not replacement theology. That is just sound biblical doctrine. The church has not replaced Israel. I must say that up front. Because there's going to be some people that might think that I'm into replacement theology, and I'm not. And I'm actually going to cover that probably in another small video. 
But nonetheless, the Word of God from Genesis to Revelation is progressive revelation. And that, my friends, is the purpose of a dispensation. Okay? The dispensation, the purpose of it is not for God to save people in different ways throughout the seven dispensations. Okay, that never happened, and that's false teaching, and that's a terrible misunderstanding of the Word of God. The dispensations are about God. It's about Him. It's about God revealing Himself more and more to us. Um, and it is a small picture, these seven dispensations, which, by the way, seven is the complete number of God. These seven dispensations are just a small capsule of God revealing Himself to us uh, and it's a picture of God revealing himself to us um, from age to age in the world to come uh, for all of eternity. So, um, next, people zero in on 2 Timothy 2.15. Okay. 2 Timothy 2.15. And I'm sure you all know what that is already, but I'm going to read it. 2 Timothy... 2.15 says, Study to shew thyself approved unto God a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So when people think about rightly dividing the word of truth, they think about a sword chopping stuff up to here and then this over to here and that over to there. Nothing could be farther from the truth, folks. To rightly divide the word of truth, you must understand that it's all interwoven together. It is seamless. Now, I've said this before, but I'm going to use the same illustration as I have before in case you haven't seen uh, some of my other series. Now, it must, the, the scripture must be woven together, seamless, as the coat that Jesus wore in John 19.23. Let's look at that real quick. And I'm going to say a few more things about that. But let's turn to John John 19 and verse 23. Then the soldiers, when they had crucified Jesus, took his garments and made four parts, to every soldier a part, and also his coat. Now the coat was without seam, woven from the top throughout. And as you know, they did not tear the coat. They said, let us not rend it, but cast lots for it, whose it shall be, that the scripture might be fulfilled, which saith, They parted my raiment among them, and for my vesture they did cast lots. These things, therefore, the soldiers did. Now, it is really important to understand something about this coat. Okay, Everything in the Word of God is there for a reason. It has a purpose. Um, sometimes when God throws in a piece of information that doesn't seem to... Uh, go anywhere. It's there for a reason. God may not have revealed it to us yet. Uh, maybe to some he has and others he hasn't at the point of their Christian walk. But nonetheless, every single word of God is there for a reason. Nothing should be overlooked. That's why you must meditate on every word of God. All of it. From Genesis to Revelation. Now, the coat represents the righteousness of God. It's His words. And if we are covered with His righteousness, we will not be found naked and ashamed. See, that's a theme that runs through the Bible. There is always uh, shame associated with nakedness. Like when David sent his men um, to, uh, to talk to um, another king that had risen up. His father had died. And so... King David wanted to make a good gesture, and it didn't go over very well because they mistreated David's servants and sent them back naked and ashamed. And, uh, of course, uh, David was uh, angry about that. But, if we are covered with his righteousness, we will not be found naked and ashamed. Jesus, naked on the cross, bore our shame and died once for all so that we are clothed with his righteousness and we will not be found ashamed. You see, in heaven, we're given robes of righteousness. But this coat 
It is, it is woven together top to bottom without seam. And the Word of God is seamless. Yes, there are things to understand about each dispensation, and we're going to cover that. Um, there is a pattern that goes with each dispensation. We're going to look into that as well. Now, what I'm going to say is this. Every person that's ever been born um, gets saved the same way. Now, there are some bad teachers out there that teach that in the Old Testament, uh, people were saved by faith plus works, that they're going to be saved faith plus works in the, uh, in the tribulation period, and uh, even saying things like, in the millennium, you're saved just by works. Nothing could be farther from the truth, because every single person has the same condition. They were born in sin. Now, Adam created perfect. He transgressed. God had one commandment for him. He said, um, Of the fruit of the tree, of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat it. But he disobeyed. He partook of it. And so he transgressed God's law. Now, death, the Bible says, uh, I'm going to look at some of these verses here. But you have to understand this one thing. That Jesus died once for all. Every single person ever born needs Jesus as their Savior. Everybody. Now, in the Old Testament, uh, when the saints died, they went to paradise. And God, uh, Jesus Christ, he brought them up into heaven okay, and left paradise empty. I cover that in a a series called Where Did Jesus Go When He Died? So I'm going to refer you to that for more details. <clears throat> now, let's look at Romans 5.12. <clears throat> Romans 5.12. It says, Wherefore, as by one man, which was Adam, sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. So, we see that every single person in this world is born into sin. Now, I want you to understand that the Bible says, uh, I am the Lord, I change not. He says, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. His plan of salvation has always been the same. Um, let's look at Romans chapter 3 and verses 10 to 12. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth, there is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way, they are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. So, every single person that's ever lived has the same spiritual condition. When they're born, they're lost. So, every single person needs a Savior. Um, otherwise, without that, they're going to face the eternal punishment of God. Which, by the way, I cover... Um, I have a series called Hell on the Lake of Fire. Uh seven parts, I believe, and I cover um, sound biblical teaching on hell and the lake of fire. So, if you want to, you can check that out. Now, Romans 3, 23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So everybody that's ever lived have not met God's standard for holiness. Um, that's why Jesus came into the world. If it was possible for works to save you, um, Jesus wouldn't have had to die. And when people start teaching works salvation in any way, shape, or form, they're making a mockery of God's sacrifice of His precious Son on the cross. Um, to me, the person that wants to teach works salvation in any dispensation they might as well just go up to Jesus and spit on him. 
because that's really what they're doing. Um, I can't say it any more blunt or plainer than that. Uh, they're making a mockery of the Lord Jesus Christ because you of yourself can do nothing. You know, Jesus said that. He said, of myself, I can do nothing. Uh, how much more should we be saying that? Jesus, perfect, sinless, the holy lamb of God, which taketh away the sins of the world. Uh, we can't do anything. We can't earn our way to heaven. We can't earn salvation. Uh, all we can do is believe and put our trust in him. And uh, after we do so, we submit our lives to God and allow him to work through us through the might and power of the Holy Spirit. Um, the Holy Spirit brings to mind those things which have offended God and, and we're repentant, we're sorry, and God works in our life to grow us in his grace and knowledge. So, moving on, let's look at Romans chapter 3, verses 26 and 28. To declare, I say, at this time his righteousness, that he might be just, and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. Where is boasting then? It is excluded. By what law? Of works? Nay, but by the law of faith. Therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. So by the deeds of the law, no man is ever going to be justified. Um, people were not saved in the Old Testament by faith plus works. They weren't saved by faith plus anything. Um, they're not saved that way today. They will not be saved that way in the future. Um, let's go... Let's look at Adam, okay? Because... Everyone from Adam to the last baby born in the millennium is saved the same way, by faith in the Son of God. Let's look at Adam. Let's go back to Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3. And we're going to read a little story here, a true story. We're going to start in verse... 6. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. Now something I have to say here is this. Remember in Romans we read that by one man Adam sin entered into the world. Eve disobeyed but that was not Satan's ultimate goal. Satan was working through Eve to get to Adam. It was not until Adam fell and partook of the fruit that the world fell into transgression. That's what the Bible says. By one man, Adam, sin entered into the world. Because if you'll notice something earlier, Eve even makes another mistake before this. Okay, She actually is talking with the serpent and she lies about the word of God, God's words. It says, And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. She just lied right there. But sin had not entered into the world till Adam transgressed. Now I know people are going to get into a what would have happened thing. Well, you know, what would have happened if, if Eve had uh, done what she did and, and Adam says, I'm not touching that. No, God said not to. I'm not going to touch it. I'm done. Guess what? I don't know. God doesn't tell us. Uh, that's not the way it happened, actually. So uh, I, I have considered that before, but I have no answer for it. Now, Actually, she added to God's words because God did not say, neither shall ye touch it, okay, lest ye die. That's not what God said. Um, so, moving on down, verse 7, 
And the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. Huh, you see? Shame came upon them. They realized they were naked. They had sinned, and now they saw things a little bit differently. But look what they did. They had works, okay? They worked and sewed fig leaves together. Now, remember, this is uh, the first man, first woman, first dispensation, which started, of course, with the creation and culminated with the judgment in the garden. You're going to see that as you go through these dispensations, there's going to be a clear starting point, and some things are going to happen, and then it's going to culminate in judgment. Uh, we will look at some of the different dispensations, but since we're here already in this one, uh, we'll go ahead and cover that. Now, another thing that um, you need to realize is that there are sons of God in every dispensation. According to... Let me look over here, see if I can find it. I'm looking off the top of my head. Um... Luke 3.38, it says, Which was the son of Enos, which was the son of Seth, which was the son of Adam, which was the son of God. So in this first dispensation, Adam was called the son of God. Um, I have even come across some really wicked teachers that teach that Adam and Eve went to hell. And I'm going to prove to you from Scripture that is absolutely false, that uh, people do not have any understanding of such a thing if that's what they're talking about. Now, here you see them working to get back in God's favor. Okay, they covered themselves. They did the work here. They sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons, which I'm not a big um, buff on uh, Freemasonry, but I believe they have some type of fig leaf aprons. Um, I'm going to have to look into that more. But when I seen that, I, I was kind of reminded of that type of thing. And uh, reading on, And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. Now that's interesting because they had sewed fig leaves together and covered their nakedness. So uh, they realized that they had done wrong that they had disobeyed God. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. And he said, Who told thee that thou was naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? And the man said, The woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. So here we have the first man pushing the blame off on his wife. Okay, there's a lot of blame pushed around on this day. Let's continue. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this thing that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. So now she's pushing the blame off on the devil. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, Thou art cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field, and upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. Now, verse 15 is very important. It's a prophecy. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. So, this of course is referring to the coming Messiah, to Jesus Christ, um, who would come and save people from their sins. Now, let's look over real quick in verse 21. Unto Adam also and to his wife did the Lord God make coats of skins and clothe them. So, earlier we see that uh, Adam and Eve did it their way. They were trying to work their way back to God. God reached down and saved them. He clothed them. He, he covered their nakedness His way. That right there tells me, see, there was an animal sacrificed. Um, it was a picture of that which is to come, that Jesus Christ would have to die on the cross, shed his blood to ransom people. 
to save them from their sins. And uh, killing that animal was God's way of uh, reaching down to them. So they were lost. But I believe this right here clearly demonstrates that Adam and Eve um, did not go to hell. They're not in hell. After all, Adam was the son of God. Now, let's see what else we have here. So, Adam and Eve, uh, they were aware of the triune nature of God. Look at verse 22. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become as one of us to know good and evil. And now, lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. Therefore the Lord God sent him forth from the garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. So, as Genesis to Revelation progresses, um, we do see the Holy Spirit, we see the Son, and um, we see the Father, we see the triune God, three persons, one God. Uh, let's see. Let's look at, okay, I was covering verse 15, let's read it again. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Let's look over in Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3. And we're going to look at uh, verse 16. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He saith not unto seeds as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed which is Christ. So this goes all the way back to Genesis chapter 3. Um, let's look at verse 22. But the scripture hath concluded all under sin, that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. Okay? Uh, that's Old Testament saints too. You see, saints is a term that uh, bridges the dispensations. Okay? Now there are uh, distinct dispensational um, things that were unique to that dispensation. But, uh, for example, uh, I was going to cover this later, but... Um, during this dispensation, saints are called Christians. That's, that's only in this dispensation. The Bible says that they were first called Christians at Antioch. And also during this dispensation, angels do not preach the gospel. Um, they do that during the tribulation, which is another reason why Christians can't go through the tribulation because of the warning that Paul gives. Um, back in Galatians. Let me see if I can find that real quick here. Um, he says, verse 8 of chapter 1, But though we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. So, the gospel isn't delivered by angels during this dispensation. That occurs during the, the next dispensation, which is the seven-year tribulation period, the time of Jacob's trouble. Uh, we will get more into that later, but let's also look at Galatians 3.29. And if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. You see, we, have, we are in, grafted into Israel. Um, the Israel God always meant to have. And even ultimately, the physical Israel that God comes back and rescues and saves them, they're eventually going to get glorified eternal bodies too. Um, they're saints. They're going to be saints. Now, you see, because we're in Christ, Abraham was in Christ, okay? We're all part of uh, his seed. He, he made the promises. Let's look back at verse 16. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. Okay, his seed 
being Christ, goes back to Genesis 3.15, and we are in Christ. The Old Testament saints are in Christ. We're going to cover a lot more scripture with that. Um, I have actually gone up to 30 minutes today, and I don't really like to run videos more than about 30 minutes at a time. So I am going to end part two, and we're going to get in a lot more scripture. I have a lot of notes here. So um, thank you for listening, and God bless.